a lot of fans remember your, the entertainment portion of your career with, uh, <laughs> uh, the, I guess it was in Boston and Milwaukee, if memory serves me right, with the Rangers. Yes, Lays. yes, okay. right, and then once in Maryland. Okay, so tell and, me, and tell Baltimore. me what made you do it, or what, 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 how, how much you well, thought. Well, when I was a Yankee, I used to really enjoy Sparky Lyle. In those days, they'd find you if you threw a baseball into the grandstands. Nowadays, they want you to throw baseballs in there, give give people souvenirs. But um, Sparky would, would wave to a portion of the fans in the grandstand. Whoever yelled the loudest for him, he'd throw him a baseball. And so he talked about, you know, one day uh, I, want to, uh, I want to go and do a pantomime of Babe Ruth calling his home run and run around the tarp and slide into home plate. I said, oh, Sparky, that would be really cool. I would really like that. Sparky never did it. But I had an opportunity to do it when I was with the Orioles. Uh, I forget what year it, it really was, 76 or 77, whatever. And we were in Boston. We were tied for second place with the Red Sox. We could not catch the Yankees at that point in the season. We were both two games back, and there was only one game to go. Uh, I started getting the crowd riled up, and I'd throw them baseballs and everything, and then uh, it started to rain, they put the tarp down, and there was a baseball on the tarp, and I said, I'm gonna do what Sparky Lyle always wanted to do, a pantomime of Babe Ruth. So I ran out on the tarp, and I picked up the ball, and I wanted to see how slippery it was, and I started skating around as the organist played, raindrops were falling yeah. on my head, <laughs> on your head, whatever. And uh, so I didn't do a pantomime of Babe Ruth at that point, but after the song was over, I left the tarp and went into the clubhouse. I was getting ready to, they got to call the game off, and I was going to get ready to get dressed. And all of a sudden, those uh, Red Sox fans started beating on the stadium with their feet. <laughs> and it was deafening in the clubhouse. It was so loud because we were right underneath them. And so Richie Dower came in and said, Demps, Demps, you got to go back out again. I didn't know what I was going to do. He said, put the pillow in your shirt and do the pantomime of Babe Ruth that you wanted to do. So I went out there, did the pantomime of Babe Ruth twice and ran around the tarp and slid and just had a good time. But we were always winning and, and I always felt like you could get away with a little more antics if you were winning. I wouldn't have done it if we had been losing. So <laughs> we were always winning all the time. So I did the pantomime of, of uh, three times. A, you picked it, you know, it, it happened there in Boston first and then Milwaukee. I did a pantomime of Robin Yount hitting two home runs against us on the last day of 1981 season. And uh, then I did it in Baltimore one time of Babe Ruth. Uh, and so but, that was it three times. But you are the entertainer. I mean, it's it just like you, you always think about <laughs> stuff like that. I mean, doing interesting well, things. Well, baseball fans are always appreciative of anyone who will communicate with them on a personal level. And so it, it, it made it easy for me because we were such a great organization and always winning and always in a pennant race. And so I didn't mind so much, but I love the fans. I mean, that's what made baseball. And they love you. For, uh, <laughs> for every, and if it was a, a little bit of pantomime of this or telling jokes or just talking about baseball in general and the characters that I met, I was never afraid of spending time with fans. And I think players ought to do more of that.